Welcome to the Kintsugi Heroes podcast, where we share inspirational stories of everyday people going through different challenges and how they overcome them. Please be aware that the story you're about to hear may have moments of deeply felt emotions and personal experiences. If anything you hear has a triggering effect, please reach out to someone who can help keep you safe. If you love this conversation, we'd love you to like and share it with your friends so we can continue to share more inspiration and hope to as many people as possible. Now, listen up for our next hero story. This conversation is with the lovely Mandy Alexis. Her story is one of addiction. And she was a functioning cocaine addict for over 16 years. And now she's entering her fourth year of being clean. Her relationship with drugs started at the age of 12. And she talks about what that journey was and how she was invited into that world and how it progressed from that point. She talks about the challenges she went through and also how she went through her healing. And she's very motivated to share with others how she healed. She herself has gone through a lot of therapy. She's relied on community. And now she's helping motivate others to heal, grow, and live healthy and happy lives. It's an inspiring story. And she didn't want this to be a a negative, sad story. And that's why she's focusing on the healing. It's a beautiful story. And I'm really grateful for Mandy to bring her energy, her vibrancy, and her vulnerability to this conversation. So enjoy. This is Mandy Alexis. Well, here we are. It is another episode of Kintsuki Heroes and I'm here today with Mandy Alexis. Mandy, hello. How are you going? Good. Thank you. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much. Whereabouts are you joining me from today? So I'm actually living in Nicaragua right now. Um, I'm originally from Canada, but I've been in Nicaragua for six months now. So mm. Wonderful. Well, it's so lovely that technology enables us to connect no matter where we are in the world. So yes. um, thank you for being here. And thanks for coming along to share your story. I I always am just so in, in, such, in such admiration of, of the guests that come and share their stories and you know, I know that it can be difficult sometimes, it, you know, you're going to be a little bit vulnerable. I know these stories uh, take a bit of bravery and yeah, so I just want to honour you for that and thank you so much for, for doing that. All right, well, I, I'm going to hand over to you now. Uh, this is about you. So can you take us back to where your story begins? Yes. So basically my story begins with um, starting to use Uh, drugs and alcohol at a very young age. So I was 12 when I first started or I first tried marijuana. And like shortly after that, like 14 years old, me and my friend group threw in, you know, um, mushrooms, acid drinking by 16, like ecstasy was thrown in the mix all along, still drinking with all this. And then 19 years old came along and I tried cocaine for the first time. And then I was hooked. Um, I was actually a functioning cocaine addict for 16 years. And so now I'm going to moving into my fourth year of being clean from that. So basically I wanted to share with the world, with the listeners, um, how I went from, from there to here, you know, I'm, I've been on my healing journey. I would say I'm recovered now. Like there's the stage where you go through recovery of any addiction, whether it be alcohol, drugs, um, you know, um, but I feel I am recovered from that. And I am very much deep into like my healing journey, which is the, what I feel is like the more important part of someone staying clean, staying away from those addictions, uh, creating the life that they truly desire. Right. So, um, it's, it was, you know, pretty wild journey for me because I never would admit I was addicted. I was like, Oh, I can stop whenever I want. Right. And this is just part of my life. And you know, a part of my life turned into 16 years, which is pretty intense. And like, I did try to quit a few times prior to that. And then I'd go like a month or two and be pretty proud of myself. And then, you know, 
an opportunity would come along and I'd be like, oh, well, I did so well. I'll get to get back into it. And then there's another year of my life. Right. And like, it wasn't until I really was like looking at what my life was based on, you know, I mean, I'll just like back up a little bit in the sense of like the functioning part to the outside world. You would, that they would think that I was doing very well. I had graduated with honors. I had like opened up a couple different businesses throughout this time. I was volunteering, always going to the family functions. But what they didn't see was what internally and I was struggling with and mentally too. Um, And basically what had happened is I, one day I'm just like, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of like myself and the relationships I was attracting and the way that my brain worked and, you know, just um, how unhealthy everything about me was and my like outside world, right? What, like what I was attracting from my outside world when it came to relationships and just all these like added stresses and dramas and like freak outs and anxiety based on what I was doing to my, to my brain and my body by using cocaine consistently. Right. So um, it happened in stages. My, my like, okay, first I, my big aha moment of like, I need this to be done was a breakup. My, I was with this guy who was extremely unhealthy, um, very mentally abusive, never physically, but like when that relationship ended, it was really a big, like, okay, is this the kind of man that I want to attract the kind of life that I want? Is this the kind of love that I want? And I knew that I needed to change as a person in order to attract like that kind of love into my life. So that was my first big moment. And I really started looking at what I could do to change. And um, I found community was one where um, one of our big things that we were supposed to do every day was post inspiring things on, on, in this Facebook group. So originally it was find, um, like a pretty picture and then post like a, Inspiring message on top of it, right? So I started off where I would just take a picture of my my cabin lake and it would say, own your happiness, you know? And then as I started to be like become more sober, like from the drugs and stuff, I noticed I had like a gift of seeing some like beauty in the world. And then I was able to actually create my own motivational memes, which um I now like I've sold at wellness events and addiction fairs and things like that, like to help other people see like the other side of, of what life can be. And so that was like my first step in really finding something different when it came to how I was living my life. Right. Because I had these friends that were great friends for many reasons, but like we, all we did was party together. Right. So it was having to take a real hard look at my life and have real hard conversations with people and say like, you know, I can't do this anymore, which is very challenging for what well, was very challenging conversation to have, right? Like people that you're, you're intertwined with like for, for years and stuff. So, um, that's something that anyone who's in, in addiction is going to have to face are these moments of having hard conversations. Um, but I, I think it's important for them to understand that there is another community out there for them, right? Because it is hard to be alone on this journey. So I just want to just enforce that, that there are many people out there who are also looking for that deeper connection, for that guidance, for that help to be able to stay on um, a clean path, right? So those were some big steps that I took in the beginning. And once my mind started to clear and I welcomed new things into my life, um, I actually started learning about the addiction and what it was doing to my body, what it was doing to my brain. I wanted to be able to understand like what, um, um, what I was going to go through so that I wouldn't panic. Right. Because there was times where my brain would literally feel like it was on fire and I knew what would take that away. But I also knew that this pain meant I was healing. So to understand that fact really, I think helped me like move through the pain then I started learning about the mind and reconditioning. So I'm not sure if you or your listeners are familiar with Dr. Joe Dispenza, that he talks all about rewiring the brain. And I dove into his rewired uh, course 
Um, I literally listened to it over and over and over again, because also understanding the mind and the subconscious, the more you listen to something, the more it becomes wired into your brain. So I used his practices a lot to be able to recondition how my brain would think around drugs, around myself, around my life. And that was a huge, huge help with like, I think pushing my, my recovery faster was actually taking account um, of what my brain needed to recondition around what had been my life for so long, you know? Um, then really I started diving into the deeper work. Um, I'm not sure if you know this either, but the head and the heart both hold memory, right? So if you're only healing one area, you're more likely to fall backwards into like your old patterns, your old traumas and things like that. You need to be able to heal both areas. So then I started looking at what was caused, but pain in my heart, what like was I like, holding, what memories were I holding in my heart that what like made me go down that route? Like why at 12 did, did, did 12 year old Mandy think she needed to start smoking weed? And why did 14 year old Mandy want to take psychedelics to escape her reality, right? And in those moments, like as a 14 year old, I was like, oh, I just want to try it. I just want to experiment. Like, oh, it's fun, fun, fun. But th there is a deeper route. Like well, I, I needed to keep getting harder and farther away from my reality without knowing it then. But now looking back, I can see that. So I, I looked at my life. Um, I had an alcoholic father. He was in and out of my life, very absent. He was violent. He never was violent towards me. But he would break things, punch walls, uh, like make holes in walls and yell and, um, you know, very, very disruptive. And how can a young child feel safe? So, of course, she's going to want to escape her reality, right? So once I was able to face these traumas and really look at what started my road down, like me down this road, I was able to to do the deep work and really let go of even a bigger part of who that man you was and why that man you went down that road. And honestly, like once you can look at those things together, you can change, you can change everything completely. Like my life is so different. Everything operates different. This monkey mind that I used to have all these wild thoughts and like really just wanting to shut it up. Like it's not there anymore. Like, you know, and I feel a lot lighter in my body now. Like, um, it's just, I, it's just, it's, it's so incredible how powerful we are as humans. And if we could just take control and do the work and, and in steps, you know, like I've done a lot of steps, but not all at once. And I just, yeah, I just, I want people to see that change on any caliber is so possible and we can just keep evolving and keep empowering and keep getting to that, those stages of creating life the way we want it to be. So yes, so that is kind of the big realm of, uh, of my story. Well, yeah, thank you. Um, it was funny because one of the questions as you were talking, I think you, you answered, well, you started to answer and you, you, you did that quite well, which was what was, did you, had you figured out what that, the root underlying cause of the 12 year old, um, you know, seeking the drugs to begin with, the, the, the marijuana and then moving on from there. And like you said, it was, you, you were numbing yourself, escaping from, mm -hmm. you know, the, the family, this environment, this, yeah around you or what you've grown up with and that makes sense and and you know I, it's it's very common you know and I think what your story has already started to show is the impact of our environments as young children and what we take on and well, yeah. how for so long we can re, be reacting to that and numbing ourselves without even knowing it yeah. And we do that in different ways. Yours happen to be through the drugs and other people's it can be other ways as well. And this is what addiction addiction is. It is, it is a, a conditioning, isn't it? It's a, it's a numbing. It's a soothing. It's how can I escape from feeling this pain? Yeah. And like, 
Um, I've actually just more reasonable. Well, I've been for many years, for many years now, but even more so in the last maybe a few months, really digging deep into understanding the subconscious mind. So I have known for, for years now that from like zero to seven, your brain is literally a sponge. So you are just taking it in. Right. And it's, it's pretty intense to think that like, so our subconscious, our subconscious mind is like driving 95% of our reality, but yet we are not conscious of what our subconscious mind is like thinking. We're not thinking in our subconscious mind. Right. And it's only 5% of our conscious mind. So even me today, this, like, I'm very conscious about what I think love is right. What a a healthy family should be like, what a man should, how a man should treat a lady and how a, a lady should like treat a man. Consciously, I know this. Subconsciously, ma- little Mandy saw not the things that conscious Mandy believes. So now it's it's digging in and and combining so that your subconscious is caught up with your conscious mind, right? And once people start doing that work as well, it's pretty incredible, like what our realities will create because. Until we're really aware too of like all of these things, like we are just going to be in a loop. And I mean, I was in it for years, 16 years. I was like, yeah, this is it. This is what you do. This is, what it, this is how I get through life. This is life. Like, and I, it's, it's wild because there is a part of us that knows there's better because I remember feeling like there's got to be more. But I was like, but this is it, right? But there's that thing in you, like your soul, let's say, that's telling you like there's more. And um, I've had conversations actually with, with different people. And one was a 12 year old boy. And I asked him, are you happy? And he said to me, well, I don't know what happy feels like. And then I said, well, do you like how you feel right now? Like in life? And he said, no. And I said, well, that's the start. You know, you don't like how you feel right now. So now it's how do we change this feeling? Even though he couldn't tell me what happy felt like based on whatever he was growing up in, but he knew that he didn't like how he felt. So that is step one, knowing that. And now working from that point, well, you don't like this. Okay. So now what do we do to change it? You know? So that's in, in, it was just wild to me like that, like at 12, first of all, he was very unhappy, but also that he was aware. He just needed someone to point it out to him. And so, you know, having conversations about yourself is, is, they're also going to help wake it, awaken you into a journey of, of unbelievableness, limitlessness, mm. right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you have siblings? I do. I have and, a lot of family. They, <laughs> right. And were they also impacted by the home environment? Yes, very much so. Um, my, my brother, it's very sad. Like his whole life, he's like, I don't want to end up like dad. I don't want to end up like dad. And he ended up like dad. He's an alcoholic. He's like not in a great relationship. He doesn't treat her the best. Um, you know, it's very, very unhealthy. These two, like he's unhealthy. Like he's, he's younger than me. And he looks like he's probably 10, 15 years older than me because of like his lifestyle choices and just the way his brain works in the sense of like the negativity like, you know, um, everything's connected. And so the way he thinks is destroying his body as well, not, and then add on the alcohol abuse. And it's very, very sad because I tried, obviously, you know, being my brother, I love him and I wanted him to come on this journey with me, but he, he either, I don't know if he feels he's not worthy or if he's just too deep in it. Like, I'm sure there's a combination of reasons why people do not choose this to heal. Um, but I also think that you need, you need to want it obviously. Right. And yeah, it's, uh, it does, it doesn't start off easy, but it definitely gets way easier. And so just getting through those humps, like anything, right? Like you just need to get over that first big hurdle and there will be more, but it's just, I swear there's just one big one. Right. But yeah, so my brother was very much impacted. My brother, my dad was way meaner to my brother you know, verbally, like they put him down all the time. And then I have an older sister too, also affected. Like you, we could just see it. She, like we all, we all know. We've talked about the effects that they've had, and um, 
I don't know why it was me that is the one chosen to, to, to go this way. I guess there needs to be one to break the generational cycles in each family. Um, and then I chose, and I chose to take that journey. Sorry for the interruption. This is Ian Westmoreland, the founder of Kintsugi Heroes, and thank you for listening to this story from one of our amazing heroes. Our mission is for these stories to provide hope and inspiration to people experiencing life challenges and to also educate the broader community on how best to provide support. If you would like to help us continue to produce more hero stories and cover more adversity themes, we would welcome all donations. These can be made via our website, kitsukiheroes.com.au. The donate function is at the bottom of the homepage. We'd also welcome any feedback. You can email me direct using ian at kintsugiheroes.com.au. Now let's get back to the story. Have you been really open or have you shared the the, the journey, I guess, from the point that you realised you needed to end the addiction and break free? Have you shared that with your family? Close. Yeah. So at the beginning, I, I, at the beginning, I was very like, did it off by, on my own. I didn't tell anyone. Um, like obviously my friends knew and like, cause you know, I had to have talks with many of them and I actually had to change where I was living based on like that choice and stuff. But anyways, yeah. And then my, my siblings knew cause I would like, you know, drink with them and stuff and they would know that I was into stuff. And so they knew and then it wasn't probably till like a year in where I felt like I had really done a good job that I like let my mom know and started to, to be more open about it with other family members. And then it was about two and a bit years that I was like, I want to share. And it was when I did my first podcast, I guess a year ago now. And so getting, getting on there and like literally exposing my entire life that where so many people thought I had it all together and like I was fine and like you know just really like exposing all this all the ways like like I actually was even a drug dealer for five years to have to just pay for my habit I lived a very lavish life I made up stories that my boyfriend was like um just really well off and didn't want me to work you know and so I had this whole other thing going and then exposing all these truths and like who I actually was. And, but by the time I did that, I was so proud of who I'd become that I was okay with sharing who I was. But obviously when I was in the moment of who I was, I was not going to share someone I was ashamed of. Right. So. Was it difficult? Like you just mentioned the, the five years of of dealing drugs to, to pay for the habit and having this lifestyle, I could imagine the world that you lived in. Was it hard to shift out of that? Yes and no. It was like I had decided I wanted to open a business. And so I knew that I did not want my drug dealing and my business to be intertwined because I had seen enough movies. I know that is not good, right? And so, but letting go of that life like never having to worry about money, like always having a good, a good time. Cause like, obviously that good time led to, to very, very low moments, very, very, just like, just destroying ourselves moments. Um, but it was, it was challenging because I had been so used to that. Right. And letting go of the money and the ease and the like no responsibilities and to a degree and all this kind of stuff. And, um, so yeah, like it took me a while to get used to like, not spending money the way I was spending money and not going like, like we used to just party for days sometimes, like two, three days in a row, we would just keep be going. And because I was trying to already start and create this other part of my life, like I did slow down with the partying, but like, definitely like there were moments where I was like, Oh, just be so much easier just to go back to that life. But like I said, there was this thing in me speaking, you want better, you want better. Right. So if I was trying to progress my life on the outside, like I was still like destroying internally, right? You've mentioned this inner voice a little bit, and it sounds to me like the inner voice won out. It was it was spoke louder than that maybe the, the darker voice inside that went, "Come back, come back to the couch," you know. 
whereas the other voice was louder and more persistent, or the, at least you listened to that. Talk to me about you know, that a little bit. Yes, my that inner voice that wanted more, wanted better, definitely has always been there and always been loud enough for me to to still progress in some right um I'm not sure if it's just because of how I saw my family in, like from a very young age right like um very unhealthy habits in a lot of ways just the way my dad was treated my mom um you know they, so many un, like failed marriages so many unhappy people like I don't know like if that part of my subconscious mind that I saw that stuff was like, nope, that's not going to be you. Nope. That's not going to be you. Right. So, um, I just knew I could just feel that there was, there was always something better for me. And even though, you know, because I'm human and because of what I went through, I went down this very, you know, this crazy path to get to me finally actually doing all the big work to get what was better. Um, I, I did finally get there and, but that voice was always there because it could have been a lot worse. Like I, you know, I've had friends that went in another direction and they, they were like addicted to like crack and like meth and their lifestyles were very low, like in the sense of where, like, you know, dirty places they're hanging out with, like really like, like just different. Like my, as like cocaine lifestyle. I was living in a high rise. We were going on trips. Like we hung out with people that had like, you know, we're all getting paid thousands and thousands of dollars a day. Like it was just interesting how like that was the route. There was like still something in me that was like, you need to do better, even if it's, you know, not the best way to be doing better. Um, but yeah, so but seeing some of my friends go through that like also was a good like awakening to me because it's like this could flip at any moment, Andy. This could flip at any moment, right? So it, I still had that awareness where it was like, okay, like this can't continue forever, you know? Um, did you always have a, 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 that inner belief that you would be able to make the change that was needed? Yeah, so I always believed I would be able to until there was that moment where I wasn't doing it. Like, you know, like I always just thought I'd be able to just stop. I'd just be able to stop. And it wasn't that easy, but my fight was definitely stronger than the, 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 the weakness, I guess, of going back. Like I would fumble like my first like I tried to stop before. And like I said, I would go like a few months or whatever. Right. And then I'd fumble back. But one thing I made sure to do was hold myself accountable, which I think is very important message too, for people. Like I wasn't hating on myself, but I was holding myself accountable. I would, cause I would, friends would say to me, Oh, it's okay. It was just the one time. And I was like, no, it's not okay. Because if I let it be okay, then I'm just going to keep doing it. So I'm like, not okay. Like I'll admit I effed up. Like, but I don't want this and I'm going to like re I journal about it. I would cry about it. I would get all the emotions out surrounding it, but I would tell myself like, no, like you, you can do better. You know? And I literally talked to myself all the time. I would listen to motivational speakers. I put on affirmations at night that told me I was strong, that told me like, you know, to keep going and things like that, because like those words, even though I'm going to bed, it's probably one of the better times to listen to meditations and affirmations. It's getting in there. So I did everything possible to make sure I was a success because I just knew I needed out and it wasn't as simple as I thought it was going to be, but I was, I wasn't going down without a fight. And that fight got me to where I am today. <laughs> it's wonderful. And did you have a network of people or a small group of people or do you think that it was it sounds like you're just really independent and very strong within yourself it, it, it's very clear that's who you are as a person but I'm wondering did you have others that you reached out to that you relied upon or that helped you in that in that journey yes Yes. Um, yes. As, as independent I am, definitely could not have done this without community. 
Um, my boyfriend at the time, he was like, so he didn't party or do drugs. He, he, me and him met while I was going through my journey and he knew everything about me. And it was actually part, part, the way he loved me was part of what made it like me be able to also continue on this journey. And he was very much a support. And then like, but my best friend who's still my best friend today, um, she was the biggest support. Like she, I was going through so much mentally and emotionally. And I, I swear I was like, I was, I was like bipolar and I didn't understand the world without drugs. I also discovered I was very much an empath. And so just feeling all these things for the first time and her and I lived together through like, I think it was like coming into the first year, like I was just a year in kind of thing. And we worked together. So, (laughs) and she was so understanding and so patient and so kind because like, I was like lost in the sense of like not understanding like what I was feeling and what I was going through. And like, if, like, if I didn't have her to, to, to be so understanding and, and, and love me so much because I was a lot. I was a lot because I was going through a lot, but she never once was like, no, I can't do this. Like get out. Like she was like, what do you need? How can I help you? Let me hug you. Like what will make this better? And was, Ooh, I'm going to cry. Like it was, uh, like so, so, so special because so you do definitely need people you can lean on. It's not a journey I would recommend doing on your own because we're human and we need connection, but you don't need a lot. You need a few good people who will just be there and, and you can do it. So that's really encouraging and beautiful to hear. Like hats off to your best friend. How be- what an amazing friend to have. We all need yes. friends like that. Yeah. Um, what was the time period between you first starting to wean yourself off and then feeling like, yeah, I'm, I'm now, I don't know, is it the word clean, healed? Sure. Yeah. Clean. How long did that take? Yeah. So from, I would say it was probably around the year mark where I knew I was like in the clear kind of thing. Right. So like, but so that's, that's a long time too, but at the same time, not a long time. Right. Cause so considering I was, since I was 12 using drugs, but then only just after one year, I was like, okay, I did it. Like, you know, obviously, uh, there was still a lot of things in the sense of like healing and understanding myself and la 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 la. But like the fact that I didn't think that I was going to go back. So yeah. So after about a year, then it was like, I felt like I was in the clear in the sense of not going to fall back words again if I because I I changed my entire lifestyle for a while where in the sense of like I couldn't go out like I didn't know how to be social without drinking and doing drugs because that's all I did so I didn't really do much and I canceled like I didn't go to concerts I didn't want to go for dinner and drinks I you know I went for ice cream and walks you know uh, a movie you know kind of thing which and like I did spend a lot of time in Costa Rica actually during my healing journey which was just happened to work out that way uh, which was also like such divine timing for me because it, it definitely brought me into a new, you know, environment and all this stuff. But, um, discover who Mandy was and what Mandy liked to do that wasn't drinking and cocaine. And so, um, I was scared a little bit to, to try to go into these atmospheres where there was so much trigger, but like after a year, I'd say that I was like, okay, yeah, like, I can go back and do those things and be okay and stuff. And yeah, it was. And I mean, nowadays, like, I don't, I don't even love to drink all that much. Like I have, but like, it's not, I'm, I can go out and do karaoke and dance till two in the morning and not have a sip of alcohol. Like, you know, so, um, I really don't, I don't need those things anymore or want them because I, I can see how beautiful my life is and how life can be and how much fun it is without those stuff. I don't need to hide from my emotions. I don't need to hide from my environment. Like I want to remember it all and embrace it all and bring it all in. And so it's, it's very, very different for me now, how before that's all I wanted, you know? So. I love hearing you describe how you're experiencing the world now 
versus, you know, I guess for a large chunk of your life from the age of 12 to, you know, all those years later and um, a couple of decades, I guess. And Mm -hmm. yeah, it must have been this almost like being born again, like, you know, starting life again, because you're actually feeling and experiencing it in a completely new way. Yeah, I would literally like say, like, I feel like I'm like a child. <laughs> like I'm like when I first would start, right? I'd be like, I feel like I'm a kid just learning how to be in the world, right? And like deal, like feel your energies and the emotions and I'm experiencing things for the first time in a sense, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. It's lovely that you can do that as well with the maturity and the wisdom of an adult too. And then appreciating it for what it is because you didn't have it yeah. for so long then you have it and it's like, wow, I actually can be so grateful and, and appreciative of this, this experience. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. And, you know, obviously I still have my stuff. I'm human. I, my, you know, I go through all the emotions still and like yeah. all this stuff, but it's, it's just so it is, it's beautiful being able to experience life feeling mm-hmm. from exactly who you are instead of mm-hmm. like, enhancing it with something or numbing it with something, you know? And it's like, I'm literally just living in my own and taking it in as, as me, you know? So Mm -hmm. yes, it's great. (laughs) Um, couple more questions. First one is how has that journey, the, the addiction journey that you've been on, how has that now shaped or influenced what you're, how you're living your life now? what you're doing it shaped it in the sense of like because I did that journey now I I have a mess that can be my message right I I do believe obviously I do believe everything happens for a reason and we're here for a purpose and as much as maybe I was on that journey for too long but like something about that now I did that and now I can share my message with the world and I can hopefully inspire others and show people what is possible And also for me, like in this human experience, I for personally get to see like what transformation actually is, you know, like I was one way for so long and now I'm a completely another way. And for me to experience both degrees in this human experience is, 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 it's wow to me. And I feel like all of us humans can do that. Like take like we don't I don't think we're here to to just suffer and stress and be in anxiety like those are part of you know stresses anxiety whatever are part of the human experience but they don't have to be so multiplied so it doesn't have to be such the the focal point of our life I just feel like maybe if people can hear my story and see how like I took control and took these steps and really started working on myself like how light and open and enjoyable life can be well I'm certainly getting that sense like I'm energized and inspired from (laughs) listening to you I'm like I yeah I'm so happy for you and I'm happy to be alive at this point just because of just listening to you speak right because you're reminding me of the joy of life and the choices we have and that as humans we are incredibly powerful I think we forget that and we can take for granted the simple things and for someone that hasn't been on an addiction journey like yours you know I've not had that struggle and I listen to you and I think wow you know there's so much to be grateful for there's so much to experience in the moment and um, it's really inspirational and I love hearing how you've approached it and taking control and being accountable and I think that's the other piece we uh, you know as humans we we always have to be accountable to ourselves first and you learned that and you did that mm-hmm. yeah thank you thank you yeah i just really feel that humans can be experiencing so much more joy than we are because we're so trapped in here and we're so trapped in our cycle of what we think life should be we, you know and you know just doing small things Five minutes of meditation. Like people think of meditation, they think they need to sit there for an hour. No, take five minutes. Do a guided one. You don't even have to sit in silence and just breathe. You know, uh, I journal, gratitude journal. Like I read the magic like over and over and over again. And it literally has changed the way my mind works and can view situations where like 
normally you could get pissed off about something, but if you can just switch that and be like, okay, well, why can I be grateful for this? And I have a real life story just so that people can understand the power of gratitude. So I'm going to share it with you. So I was in a really, really bad car accident. Like car was totaled. I was a mess. Obviously I was super scared during it. I was, I cried. There was lots going on, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Car accident's over. Things are done. And I see people. Oh man, that really sucks. Like now your car is totaled and like, oh, you got to deal with MPI and like, oh, you got to go car shopping. And I was like, what? Because my mind went like this. I was so grateful that my brother dropped everything and came to get me. I was so grateful that there was bystanders who called the cops. And so a tow truck came and took my car away. I was so grateful that I had insurance on my car so that I had auto loss of use and had a car to use. Well, I was like, car shopping, new car. Like, wow, like look at all these things that I have to make this experience more pleasant, pleasant than painful. Where like so many people were focusing all this like energy on it. Where because I had been practicing gratitude for, you know, years now, I saw the situation from a different place. And my whole experience about everything was so different. And I just that in that moment, I realized like, wow, gratitude is so powerful because I'm not stressed. I'm having a great time. I can see how lucky I am. And I'm going to like enjoy finding a new car. Where anyone who I had talked to, if they had gone through that experience, they'd be, be, they'd have stress chemicals and probably not sleeping and like just feeling aggravated. And I was like, damn, I'm so happy I read that book. <laughs> like, so just, it just really solidified to me, like how cra- like in yeah. crazy our brains are. And if we do have control over changing how we think and then see and experience the world. I love it. I love it so much. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, my last question to you. Mandy, is if there's someone listening to your story right now who resonates, maybe they've fallen into the drugs or or alcohol, or it, they can resonate with that numbing, you know, and finding an addiction to numb the pain, or they resonate with anything that you've shared, is there something you'd like to leave them with? I want them to know that they have the power to change. I, I want them to be- start believing in themselves. I want them to to know that they are worthy and they deserve a life full of beautiful things. And it just takes one small step to like start the journey and they can choose what that step may be, whether it be looking for a new community, starting the journal, the gratitude journal, listening to the affirmations at night, do them all if you want, but one small step will start building those blocks to make more steps and more steps and more steps. But I need, I just, really need people to know that I believe that they deserve to have everything they want from life. What a way to finish. That's absolute gold. Thank you so much, Mandy. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Appreciate your story, your energy showing up and just giving the gift of your voice and what you're doing just by sharing the story. It's really inspirational and I know it will help people. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Kintsugi Heroes. Please like and share the show to your friends so we can get this out to even more people. If you have a story you'd like to share with us, please reach out using the contact details below and join us next week for our next Heroes story. Until then, keep being you and remember that we are all heroes in our own unique way. Only when it's broken you bro